Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today we'll be talking about Marcus May and how the Jets are relentlessly talking about a contract extension. But before we get started, just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media. I'm Matt O'Leary NY. If you haven't already, please make sure to check out the podcast and don't forget to subscribe to the new channel, Just Jets Clips, where I'll be clipping segments from the podcast and other shorter form stuff over on that channel. Check it out, please. All right, so here's the quote. The Jets are working relentlessly, and Robert Sala hopes that it gets done soon. So it seems like the Jets are trending towards re-signing Marcus May, which I think is super important. He signed to a franchise tag this year, which is a one-year deal at $10.6 million, which is less than he probably would have gotten on the open market and is good value for this year, but I still think it's important for the New York Jets to sign him to a long-term deal, even though he's older for only being in the league for what four years is going into his fifth year he's 28 years old already but that's McCagnan drafting older guys but he's a solid player for this Jets team and a leader and I think it's important to retain him so what could an extension look like I'm thinking about three years, $36 million, or an average annual value of $12 million a year. I think that's fair value for a guy like Marcus May. It's not up in the $14 or $15 million a year range. I don't think it's going to get that high, frankly. But if you told me that I'd have to pay 12 or 13, I'd probably go up to $13 million to bring back a guy like Marcus May, who means so much to this defense, and they don't have very many veteran building blocks. Yes, they have younger guys that they're going to start building around, but it's important, especially on the defense and a secondary that's going to be really young, at least it is on paper right now, to have not only a veteran in the room, but one who can actually play and is good. So let's take a look at the numbers. According to Pro Football Focus, he had an 82.9 grade, which is the fifth highest for safeties in the NFL. He had 88 tackles last year, which was a career high for him so far. A 58.7 completion percentage allowed, which is very good. That, that's solid numbers. And he only allowed three touchdowns in 16 games. Passer rating allowed was right over 80, 80.4. And he played 99% of snaps in 2019 and in 2020, 100% of the defensive snaps. So after getting injured in his second year, the thought was, oh, is this someone who just can't stay healthy? Well, he's proved the doubters wrong the last couple of years as he has played played a ton of snaps for the Adam Gase and Greg Williams Jets, and that is going to continue, I would hope, under Robert Sala. The guy's just a solid free safety. You put him back there and you don't have to worry about him. And right now in the secondary, the Jets have a lot of holes where you do have to worry. On the other side, at strong safety, one would probably imagine Ashton Davis is going to get a significant amount of playing time. That's a massive question mark. Bryce Hall, while I'm optimistic about him, thought he had a good rookie year and think he's a good developmental guy. That's a question mark starting on the outside. Javelin Guidry is a question mark. Michael Carter II, who could maybe also play in the slots, a question mark. On the other side, don't even get me started on Bless Austin as a question mark. So they have a lot of work to do in that secondary, and having a vet like Marcus May, who's a really good leader. I mean, just look at what he did last year for Lamar Jackson. He came out and called out Greg Williams. That's probably one of the reasons why Greg Williams got fired, is because veterans like Marcus May and captains like Marcus May were so upset about the play call, and were rightfully so, because he put a undrafted free agent rookie corner out on an island. I'm going to get all worked up about that all over again. I don't want to do that. that. That's a story for another day, but this guy, he's an important piece of the team. I know he plays safety, but it's not going to be the massive deal that Jamal Adams was looking for. $20 million a year versus $12 million a year is a significant, significant difference, and he's really, really good at his job, and he's been a great soldier through some really bad New York Jets football teams, so I say reward him with a contract. I really hope the Jets do get something done. It is a high priority, and I'm glad that Joe Douglas is prioritizing. I'm, I'm glad that Robert Sala is prioritizing, and I think something gets done before the season, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. Should the Jets try to get something done before the season? Would you re-sign him in general? What would you pay him? And so much more to get after me here or on social media at Matt O'Leary NY. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll talk to you next time.